And so this surah is very important in that sense. Um, so, um, now, how else is this surah paired is very interesting. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the next surah says, Alif la mim, dhalika al kitabu la raiba fi. In Fatiha, you're asking Allah for guidance. And then in Surah Al Baqarah, you say, Allah answers by saying, dhalika al kitab. This is the book, Hudal lil muttaqin. It is guidance for people who have taqwa. So over there you're saying, Allah guide me to the straight path. Over here Allah is saying, ذلك الكتاب. That's the book. That's the book you need. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. It is guidance for people who have taqwa. So any way you look at Fatiha, you'll see that Fatiha is, it, it is like has tremendous amount of pairings within itself and with the other surahs around it. One opinion, some of the companions that I'm not going to go into that right now, that Sab'a Thamani means Surah Al-Fatiha and seven other large surahs, so like Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah Al-Nisa. I don't know if I agree with that opinion. But Fatiha is also called Wal Quran Al Azim, the great recitation, because it's recited all the time, all the time it's recited, mm -hmm. right? And the other thing that's very special about um, very special about Fatiha is <coughs> it's the only surah, as I said, that's described in Quran, right? It's the only surah that the tafsir of this surah is given in Quran in Surah Al-Hijjah. And it's the only surah described in Hadith al -Qudsi. It's the only surah that Allah says, this is how I respond when you say this surah. Because it's such a great recitation that when you say it, then Allah responds immediately. So there's a Hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. In which I went through this, but I just want to mention it in this sense also, that it is a pairing between who? It is a pairing, the Prophet said, that Allah said, <laughs> salata baini wa baini abdi nifsain. I have divided the prayer between me and my servant into two. Right? So it is a pairing or an association between Allah and His servant. Right? This is the only surah in which you are directly actually talking to Allah and Allah is actually responding to you guaranteed 100%. This is the only surah that Allah guarantees I'm responding to you. So the Prophet says, when a person, the Abd says, if qala abd, when the, prof, when the person says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says, Hamadani abdi, my servant has praised me. Ar-Rahman rahim right? Then Allah responds, Maliki yawmiddin majadani abdi. And then you say, And for my servant is whatever he asks, right? I talked about this before, but I'll talk about it now. Where does Allah answer this? <coughs> Allah answers this, and there's two opinions. One is, Allah answers in your heart. You feel it in your heart. If you read it, the, the good thing and the bad thing about salah is that it can be very mechanical, or it can be very spiritual, depending upon the attitude you take. Sometimes some prayers can be very mechanical because you're in a hurry, you just have to go, right? But at least your body, at the physical level, you made the, the submission to Allah at the physical level. Then, less than that, so physical is the most basic, then you have the intellectual level. At least you're understanding what you're saying, right? Then if it is more than that, emotional, emotionally, you get it. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. And then more than that, it's pretty when you reach the spiritual level, then maybe you can hear something inside. You feel something inside. That when you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, it's not just physical, it is not just intellectual, it is not just emotional, but there's a spiritual response. This is one opinion. The other opinion is that uh, when Allah answers this, Ila to the angels that are up above in the seventh heaven, when a servant prays, Pray, praise to Allah, then Allah responds to, to the angels because there's another hadith that Allah says that when you remember me, I remember you in a place better than you're at, meaning with the angels. This is the second opinion. Either you can feel something in the heart or you can feel something in the highest ranks of the angels. Which opinion you hold uh, is
is up to you. But qasamtu salata baini wa baini abdi. I have divided the prayer between my servant and me into two parts. And this is what mathani means. Mathani means pairing, right? The pairing of two things. So the pairing between you as abd, as the servant of Allah, and Allah as Rabb, as the master, your caretaker, your, the one who nourishes you, the one who guides you. This is what the word Rabb actually means. Probably in some ways, the word Rabb is the single most attribute of Allah in Surah Al-Bati. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. You know, obviously, Fatiha is the beginning of the Qur'an. So the basic thing Qur'an does is introduces himself, meaning Allah, right? But Mathani also means pairing in another way. And that is that you, whenever you read Fatiha, you have to pair it with two other things within the surah, which is kind of miraculous that it turned out this way. Because you have to pair Fatiha with, you don't have to, but it is extremely recommended to pair Fatiha with other two other things. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, before you start, and Ameen, after you, after you end, right? So you have Fatiha, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik Yawmiddin, all of this you have but in, you have two pairs in the beginning and the end of Fatiha you have two pairs right so uh, Fatiha is a pairing that is really very interesting and there's no other pairing surah like this in Quran or any other scripture for that matter there's, there's nothing comparable to Fatiha it really is very unique and if we were to understand the significance of Fatiha in the sense of that it really is the relationship, <laughs> the essence. Because a lot of times I see people, uh, even in tasawwuf, uh, or for example, people in spirituality, uh, their prayers are very fast. And uh, their prayers are broken, in a sense. When the essence of spirituality is prayer. Because, you know, what's very interesting, I'll share this with you, you'll find this interesting, maybe you'll find this more amazing than the pairing aspect, is that, when you pray, you're literally spelling praise. See, when you're standing, it's what letter, obviously. Uh -huh. And when you are in ruku, it is what letter? No. Ha. Such that is me. And when you're sitting, it is dal. What does it spell? Ahmed. Who is who is Ahmed? Who is the praise one? So, you are praising Allah. You are Ahmed at that time. You are the one praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're the, physically you're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By being in qiyam, by being in ruku, by being in sujood, you're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, this surah is really very interesting in this sense, uh, that it, it is a surah that pairs you with Allah. You know, you have those Bluetooth pairings, right? You've done those Bluetooth pairings, right? So, sab'a thamaniya, the seven that are the seven verses that pair you with Allah, right? The seven verses, like you know, you need a code to do blue, uh, to connect the Bluetooth pairs. Right? In the same way, the thing that really connects you to Allah is Fatiha. And if you really feel, begin to feel, you have to ask yourself: Do I read Fatiha just at a physical level? Is it at an emotional, intellectual level? It is at an emotional level, it is at a, emo, at a spiritual level. That pairing between you and Fatiha, the deeper you are in Fatiha, then the deeper the response you get of Fatiha, right? And then you are at a state where if you ask Allah, Allah says, Wali abdi And for my servant is whatever he asks, right? You just need to dig into Fatiha. And then you read every surah of the Quran with the attitude of Fatiha. What's the, you know, a lot of times when we, especially when people like me, we do tafsir, we get caught in history and the words and what does it mean and what is modernity, how does it relate to Quran and all of these, you know, intellectual things. But really, the real question is, how does it relate to guidance, right? That's the most important thing. Because the subject of Quran is man, who is called Abd, right? The subject of Quran is man. The theme of Qur'an is guidance. How will you get guidance? That's what Qur'an came down for, is to give humanity guidance, 
is to give humanity solutions to their problems to give them guidance, right? Over here, I'll also mention, how much time do I have left? So, another thing that I want to mention, so I talked about Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm din I think Maliki Yawm din I didn't talk about. We'll talk about that again. I want to talk about now, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. Iya, only you. Only and only you, Iyaka Na'budu. Only you, we worship. Now over here is something very interesting. Because a lot, now the question is, I mentioned that Fatiha is your way of pairing your relationship with Allah. It's the most important thing, right? We all know how important prayer is, right? But Fatiha is interesting because it also tells you what needs to be done to build that type of relationship to become close to Allah. The most important thing is to have that emotional understanding, Alhamdulillah, right? And then that he's my Rabb, that he's my caretaker, right? And that he is merciful to me no matter what my situation is in life. And that, you know, the great scholars of Islam, especially the mystics, they used to say, uh, or they have said in their poetry and their du'as and stuff, that, you know, hasbi, hasbi rabbi, uh, Allah is enough because he knows my situation, right? When Ibrahim was in the fire, he didn't do any du'a. It was, the ultimate is to be content. Allah knows my situation. Right? So your du'a will be uh, very uh, limited in that sense. Right? Because your trust is there that you know, He knows He takes care of me. So ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm din The more you believe in the Day of Judgment, the more chances you'll change your attitude, your character. Because if there's no Day of Judgment, there's no need to change. The thing that changes you the most, this is why from Sutul Mulk till Sutul Nas, this whole part of the Qur'an is all in the Day of Judgment. The last part of Qur'an is all in the Day of Judgment because the emphasis, the more you believe you have to stand before Allah, the more you're willing to change. Any religion that has no concept of standing before God or being in judgment before God or Allah is going to ask you about what you did, why will they change their behavior? There's no, there's no reason to change your behavior if you don't believe you're not going to be in front of Allah, right? So that is Maliki Yawmuddin. And then Iyak Na'bu. That is the next most important thing in terms of changing and transforming yourself. I'll share this with you. That, you know, I was talking today in Jum'ah about people in prison don't change. Because if you're going to put criminals with other criminals, what's going to happen? You put a small criminal with big criminals, they're not going to change. But they did this uh, very interesting experiment. They took people from the ghettos and they put them with middle class people. Guess what happened? The behavior changed. This is also mentioned in the hadith of uh, the man who killed the 99 people. You probably read this. And then, you know, finally, what is the... The rahib says to him, oh, there's no chance for you to be saved. He gets killed. Then they go to the alim. The alim says, well, there's some people over there. They're very pious. Maybe you'll change. Umar bin Khattab did this. Umar bin Khattab saw when people were not changing. There was this man who used to seduce women all the time. He was really beautiful, handsome guy. He was very good at poetry. He'd use his poetry to get girls near him and the husbands were upset. You know, our wives go and listen to his poetry. Omar, what did he do to change him? He expelled him to a different city, right? Somebody who does drugs, you put him in a different city, he has no drug seller anymore, right? He doesn't have the same contacts and he has to follow the rules that everyone else is doing. So what I'm trying to say is when you're with good people, you get influenced by good people. So, you find people who are better than you and you associate that yourself with those people that are better than you. And they will help you transform because when you're with good people, right? You ever, uh, I mean, I'm not commenting, but maybe some of you, I don't know how many of you people have heard of Tablighi uh, Jamaat. A group of people. They, uh, they go out and do da'wah, bring people to the masjid. Okay. They create an atmosphere, an environment, right? People that don't pray, haven't been praying, but they, at least what they're doing is they create an atmosphere where a pe person starts to pray, right? Because, and they transform the person's life to some degree where he becomes more religious in some limited way. I say limited way because of reasons which I'm not going to go into right now. But they do a good job in some level, okay? 
and uh, they bring the people to the masjid and they transform them and hundreds and thousands of people have changed because of that. I don't know if you've ever met any of these brothers, but they do good work in general, okay? One of the guys might have stopped by huh? here. I think one of the guys might have stopped by here. I think it was last year or two years ago. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. They usually so, come in groups. But there was the one guy from a uh, YouTube channel that they do, oh, they come no, no to Islam. No, YouTube, YouTube. They do what? There was a guy here in the Masjid, we did a fundraiser right, two right, years right. ago. He's talking about the chef who comes, I'm a chef, I'm, I'm a... They have a no, 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 no,